Okay, so we've got our first level three lesson today, which is gonna be our chicken ballotine. So let's get straight into that. We're gonna start by making a fairly simple stuffing, and I'm gonna use some sausage meat here. And this is actually sausage meat from a good quality sausage, as opposed to that cheap stuff you buy in packs from your supermarket. And then we're gonna to add to that some thyme, some rosemary, and a little bit of tarragon. And then we'll add our breadcrumbs and finally some finely diced garlic. And we'll just beat that together really well until it's all combined. And then just put that in the fridge and save that for later. Now we'll move on to the chicken. So you want to identify the smooth side first. So you'll see there's a nice smooth curve on this side and then a rough side on the other side. We're going to start the cut on the rough side about halfway up the chicken breast and we're just going to do something called butterflying. So that is cutting the chicken in half nearly all the way, but we're just gonna open it out like this. So once it's butterflied, you're gonna grab a piece of parchment paper, place the chicken on top, fold in half, and then you're just going to beat it out until it's even thickness all the way through with a rolling pin. You can use a heavy base saucepan for this or you could use a meat mallet if you've got one. Now try not to hit it so hard that you actually tear the flesh and make holes in it. But if you do, it's not the end of the world. It shouldn't affect the end product too much as long as the holes aren't too big. So put your chicken back on your cutting board and we're about ready to stuff it now. So go and grab your stuffing out of the fridge. And roll a piece into a cylinder about a centimetre in diameter and just a bit shorter than the width of your chicken breast and place it in the middle. Now roll it up from the thin edge at the bottom all the way to the thicker edge at the top, making sure at all times you're keeping it tight as possible to keep a good shape when it's finished. Now take some cling film, it needs to be about three times the length of the ballotine itself. Then you're going to place the ballotine in the centre and you're going to roll this in cling film. Again, this needs to be tight. Okay, now that's done, you need to press down on one end and I'm actually pressing down on top of the chicken slightly to make sure there's absolutely no air in here. Any air that is trapped in here is going to make your ballotine float and any of the ballotine that's outside of the water when we're poaching it is not going to cook. So what I'm doing here is rolling the ballotine along the table and when I get to the top I press my hands against the ballotine to stop it unravelling whilst I lift and start the roll again. And you're going to want to do this until the ballotine becomes an even shape and thickness all the way down its length. And now that your ballotine is rolled you can tie off one end um, but here when you do your overhand knot you want to pull the loop towards the chicken rather than pulling the loose end outwards. That will make sure the knot is right up against the chicken. And then we'll just give it another few rolls whilst holding the other end tight and tie off the other end in exactly the same fashion. And that's now prepped so we can put that in the fridge and we'll come back to that later. Okay, onto the Duchess potatoes now. So I've just peeled and boiled some potatoes until they are soft and then I've let them just steam dry for a few minutes before mashing. And now we're just going to mash until they're completely smooth with no lumps whatsoever. Once smooth, we'll grate in our nutmeg. Season with a little bit of salt and pepper. And finally, add our egg yolk and mix very well. A word of warning here, you don't want to add any butter, cream, milk, anything like that because when you put these in the oven to bake, they will sink and they will not hold their shape. As always, I'll put links to all the equipment I use in the description below in case you want to buy any for yourself. So now you've got that all well mixed together, you want to take a piping bag with a star nozzle. It doesn't have to be this exact one, but something like this is good. And then get all your potato mixture in there making sure there's no air pockets if you can. And now take a parchment lined baking tray and you're gonna to wanna to pipe even size amounts onto this baking tray. And this is one of them times where actually if you're not very good at piping, it might turn out a little better. You can see I shake here on purpose. That's to give me extra ridges because every one of those ridges is gonna go nice and golden brown when it's cooked. 
And once you've piped all of them, you can just place them in the fridge with your ballotine ready to cook later. So now let's move on to the sauce. Now I haven't done a video of all the preparation for these ingredients because if you're here watching this I imagine you already know how to dice an onion and slice garlic which is all I've done already. So start by melting some butter in a frying pan on a medium heat and you're going to add in your onions and garlic and cook them until just starting to brown. You don't want to caramelize these fully because the garlic will taste burnt. Remember, we do new lessons every Thursday, so if you don't want to miss any, click that subscribe button now. Okay, so our onions and garlic have just started to brown, and now we're going to add in our bay leaf and peppercorns, and then our red wine. And all we're going to do is bring that up to a boil, turn down to a simmer, and reduce by half. If you don't know what that means, it just means if you start with 100 milliliters of liquid, you know it's done when you've got 50 milliliters of liquid left. And when you're prepping your ingredients for this, don't worry about cutting them too small. There's no specific size needed. We're going to strain this sauce out at the end anyway, so it really doesn't matter how you want to prepare them. Alright, so that's reduced by half and we now have this syrupy consistency. So I'm just going to season with a little bit of salt and pepper. And then we're going to add in our chicken stock and our demi glace. Now, if you're at home, you probably don't have demi glace, you can get away with using beef gravy. However, if you're in a restaurant, please do not do this, you will be murdered. And we're just going to let that cook out for about 30 minutes on a gentle simmer. So you want to start getting everything else ready. So I would now turn your oven on to 180 degrees, ready for your Duchess potatoes. And you want a pot of boiling water ready for your ballotine. Now, when you put your ballotine in, it will stop boiling. You can turn the heat down to a medium and just leave it to simmer for about 20 minutes. So about five minutes after you put your ballotine on, you wanna put your Dutch chest potatoes in the oven because they'll take around 15 minutes to get nice and browned. So once your ballotine's cooked, you wanna pat it dry on some kitchen towel. You've got two options here. One is to serve it how it is. The other option is to pan fry it until it's golden brown. Now for this dish, I think it works better if it's a nice pale color. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is. So put your ballotine somewhere warm to rest and get your sauce strained into a hot bowl. Don't do this into a cold bowl because your sauce will be cold the second you try and serve it. Or you can reheat it later in a saucepan. And there we have the finished sauce, which is a nice thick consistency. And here's the cooked Duchess potatoes. And now we're ready to plate up. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of the sauce underneath rather than pouring it all over that ballotine that I've just worked so hard to get looking good. And three of those Duchess potatoes. Now a couple of big slices of that ballotine, and you can see it's looking pretty good. Now you can serve this with any vegetable accompaniments that you like. I've decided to go for some turned courgettes and carrots. some confit tomatoes which I've made by just pan frying and then leaving in a bit of garlic and thyme oil for a few hours. And then I've got some shallot petals which I've just braised in chicken stock and then given a quick blowtorch before separating into individual pieces. And finally for some texture some thinly sliced radish. And that's it, you're done. Well, if you like this or learned something, please like, subscribe and comment. And I'll see you next week.